Well, hello and welcome to your readings at the round table. I'm Jennifer. This is Jasmine, my licky friend back here. What can I say? It's time to groom herself as soon as I get on camera. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be a reading for June 1st through the 15th. Um, this is about the full moon in Sagittarius. This is amazing time, amazing time. Like, I'm not even kidding. You know, the full moon of Sagittarius comes when the sun is in Gemini. And this is so perfect because Geminis and Sagittarius people are the people that you want to have at your parties. I mean, Gemini and Sagittarius, those are the people that you want to get out there and, like, have some fun with. They are fun people. And this moon is also fun. It's a very energetic moon. This full moon in Sagittarius is happening, by the way, at 11.42 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I only do Eastern Standard Times because that's where I'm located. Sorry. Um, on June 3rd. On June 3rd. So full moons are typically about endings and letting go because we've been manifesting from the new moon to the full moon. So now it's like time to wrap it up. Now it's time to let go. It's time to release and it's time to wrap that stuff up. Now from the full moon to the new moon, we will like release. We'll constantly be letting go and like really have a, a, an ending to something. Um, this is a very energetic moon. Uh, this is entertaining, but not overly, like, emotionally dramatic, which is fantastic, which is super fantastic. Again, have you ever spent time with, like, a Sagittarius? So entertaining. I mean, really. And one of my sons has Sag rising, and I just have to laugh sometimes. I'm like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, so full moon in Sagittarius is also about long-term goals. Um, it helps us to focus our attention on looking far ahead instead of just like right now, which is what Gemini is about. Gemini has us focusing on the here and now, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's nice to have a balance between the immediate, the here and now, and the long-term, and that is... Full moon in, in Sagittarius with the sun in Gemini gives us that opportunity to do that. So this is wonderful. This is a mutable fire moon. So it can also make you feel really scattered. Like typically when the moon is in Sag, I do feel that. I feel a little scattered. That's just me. Um, and I, I mean, a lot of people feel that way. Um, during During most of the time, like... With the moon is in Sagittarius. However, this full moon, the moon is trying Mars. So this period, during this period of time, we should actually have some focus or some dedication to our plans or our goals. Because that trying with Mars is like settling it down just a little bit. Just a little. And it's enough that it we're still feeling the, I almost want to say the spontaneity of the Sagittarius, the like excitement of the Sagittarius without like feeling the burden of all that like Mars energy. Because Mars is in Leo right now. So or at least during, the, yeah, Mars is in Leo right now today. Yeah. Sorry, just double checking in my head. Um, so this is a, this is just a wonderful full moon. I'm so excited about it. I really am. And let me tell you, also while this full moon is happening, we have Mercury conjunct Uranus. So with Mercury conjunct Uranus, we can have some disruptive or maybe direct, sharply worded um, conversations or communications because, of course, Mercury is a sign of communication and Uranus is a little, a little disruptive. You know, he's just a little all over the place, a little disruptive. So this is a wonderful, this truly is a wonderful time for you to like 
uh, like celebrate and like start start your progression of letting go and releasing from this full moon until we reach the new moon in Gemini. Um, the other things that are going on during this couple of week period, um, on the 5th, <laughs> we have Venus moving into Leo, which is going to be like, it, it's going to be drama, but it's not like, it, it's not like weeping drama. It's, it, it's, it, and it's not subdued, but it's not necessarily like super emotional. It's more like the flare it's more like the expression so this is going to be a time uh that we'll see very stylish like um outfits we'll see like very stylish hair maybe makeup where we're getting a little more dramatic with our expression do you see what i'm saying um it's a time of attention to details and everyone is really focused on their appearance I mean, I like that. I'm not mad at that. I'm a Virgo. I love it. I love it. Are you kidding me? I'm like, oh, let's, let's do, let's focus on the pretty. Yeah. So, um, I think this is a wonderful, I think this is wonderful. This is not, this is not a wallflower kind of energy. This is a really like shine, shine, shine kind of energy. And if you have Venus in Leo, then you're already that person. You're already that person that is just like, hi, here I am. Look at the neat thing I've done with my hair. Look at the neat thing I've done with my makeup or my piercings or my tattoos or my outfit. That's who you are. And I love that. I love it. So awesome. Um, on the 11th, we have Pluto retrograding back into Capricorn. <sighs> Been there, done that, right? For the last, like... 15, 16 years, Pluto has been in Capricorn. He's only been in, um, in Aquarius since March, but that's okay. No worries because once January rolls around, Pluto will be moving into Aquarius and this time he will be there for 20 years. So this is just the last little energy shift of, uh, Pluto and Capricorn. And then he's going to go direct and he's going to go right back into Aquarius and he's going to camp out there for 20 years, starting in January of 2024. And you'll hear me say that a million more times. So I'm sorry now. Yeah. All right. Um, the other thing is, and I didn't write down the date, so I have to go back and look at it. Um, Mercury is moving into Gemini also on the 11th. That's why I didn't write down the date because it's the same day that Pluto returns into Capricorn. So Mercury goes into Gemini and this is a wonderful thing because Mercury rules Gemini. Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo. So this is a fantastic time for open communication. Here's the thing though. It can kind of be difficult to tell like the truth from exaggeration but it's really important to stay truthful during this time. It's really important to, like, when we're presenting something to be factual and just say, okay, here's the situation. But it's a great time for open communication. It really is. This is also a wonderful time for studying, like, philosophy or a subject on the kind of, what does it all mean? You know, because... That's what Gemini is. People that have a lot of placements in Gemini are usually really, really smart. They're extremely curious. They want to know. They want to know how things work. They want to know how it operates. They're like, how does, how does this happen? What do we do with this? How can we make this happen? It's fantastic. It truly is. I have a moon in Gemini. A little bit curious there. <laughs> um. But I think this is a great time for you to dip your toe into that what is it what does it all mean kind of thing. So on the 14th we have flag day. I love that because I have several friends actually that their birthdays are on flag day. You know, I'm always just surprised at it, like, oh my gosh, look at all these Geminis that were born on flag day. I know, it's just interesting. So we just like to bring that out. And then I'll get to the second half of the month, of course, in the second half of the month reading when I do the new moon in Gemini. 
Uh, also, I'll be covering the whole month in the monthly numerology if you can't wait for the middle of the month reading. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, stay tuned because your sign is up after this. Um, but I want to go ahead and say this because I think I've forgotten to say it on a few videos. This is a general reading for everyone. Um, so if it resonates with you, that's great. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. Make sure you check out your sun, moon, and rising sign because sometimes you will resonate more with your moon or your rising sign more than you do your sun sign. And when you're looking at your horoscopes, you should definitely be looking at your rising sign if you know it. Several astrologers online will tell you that. I do follow that now that I've learned. Um, but I love this astrologer, Marin Altman. She's on YouTube. She is fantastic. She's the cutest little thing. She's also a Virgo. Um, but she is just, she's fantastic. Um, she does tropical zodiac and Western astrology. But she also adheres to the traditional astrology and not the modern astrology. Which I have a video coming out shortly that will explain, explain the differences in those two. Yeah. So um, enjoy your reading that's coming up next. And I will see you guys really, really soon. All right, Virgo. Are you ready? Are you ready to see what we have in store for us in this full moon? This full moon in Sagittarius energy. It's a mutable sign. You're a mutable sign. I'm a mutable sign because I'm a Virgo. So I'm in it with you. I'm in it with you. And as I'm shuffling, I'm just like, please let these cards be good. It's been a weird few months. <laughs> I mean, what are we going to do, right? We're going to take a deep breath. That's what we're going to do, Virgo. And we're going to say, no matter what happens, I have a plan. <laughs> because in the end, Virgo, that's what we can do. We can plan. We can put it on a spreadsheet. We can put it out there and say, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. We have a plan. Strength. Nine of Shells, Queen of Shells, Page of Crystals, and the Wheel. Mm -hmm. All right. Strength, Courage, and Endurance. <laughs> yeah. Nine of Shells, Gratitude and Fulfillment. Queen of Shells, Peace and Compassion. The Page of Crystals, Ideas and Discipline. And the Wheel, which in the traditional tarot is the Wheel of Fortune. But this is Change and Possibilities. Side note, an octopus can fit into some really, really tiny places. Just letting you know that. Okay, Virgo, let me tell you. <clears throat> there's a lot of emotions going on right now. And I feel like there's been some times in the last few months of high emotional stuff going on. I know there has been for me, so I'm with you. But I actually feel like what we're doing now is we're taking those emotions that we do have the fortitude, the courage, and the endurance to get through. But I feel like we're taking those like emotional things that have happened to us, the emotional stuff that's been going on, and we're just saying we're grateful. We're grateful. We know the emotional things that we've been through are actually bringing us closer to what we want. They're bringing us closer to what we need. Maybe it doesn't, you know, maybe we were just like, is this really necessary? Yeah, yeah. It, at first, we didn't think that it was taking us to where we needed to be. But I feel like in order to, like, in order to know 
how great things are. We had to see how stressed, how like dysfunctional, how really difficult they could be. And maybe that's what we went through last year, Virgo. I don't know. I know some of us did. I wasn't the only Virgo that had this issue. But I think a lot of people last year had, you know, it was trying. This year is more of a hot seat for mutable signs. Sorry, Virgo. Because Saturn is in Pisces. And although it is hardest for Pisces, it is still affecting the mutable signs. Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and of course Pisces. But the strength card is saying that you have not only the courage, but the perseverance and the fortitude to endure whatever's going on. You have and you will continue to do so. Being grateful and just saying, okay, I'm grateful that this is this has occurred. I know that it's taking me exactly to where I am going to get everything I want. I needed to learn these lessons so that I could have everything I want. Embracing that energy with, I, it's almost like you're seeing and, and understanding the guidance system that your emotions are bringing to you. That you know now how you want to feel. How you want to be because you felt the things that you were just like, I'm, I don't like this. I don't like this. So you know how you want, how you want to move forward. The page of crystals is about learning. It's about learning a lesson. Ideas and discipline. You're putting those ideas that are coming into you during this learning phase and just putting them into action. You're putting them into action. You're just like, okay. Here's what I felt. This is what I know has been going on with me. And now I'm putting it into action. Absolutely. This is the time. This is a time for change for the better. This is the time to embrace that, that destiny. This is the time to say, okay, karma. Yeah, this needed to take place. Um, but this is definitely a change for the better. And it's bringing you all kinds of possibilities. It's bringing you just... All kinds of possibilities. And how exciting is that? I mean, really. There's so many good things happening. I mean, your ruler and Gemini's ruler is going to be in Gemini. So this is fantastic news because, you know, Mercury is always happy when he's in Gemini or Virgo. Um, but I think this is, a, this is the best. This is a great time. Mercury does move pretty fast, though. I'll say that. So, like, Mercury is going to go from Gemini to Cancer in less than just, like, a few weeks. Because I think he moves, he moves into Gemini on the, what did I say, the 11th? And um, then he moves into Cancer towards the end of the month. So a lot of energy in Cancer towards the end of the month. But right now, with this full moon, it's all about, like, it's all about Gemini. All right, this is great. Okay, so what we've got here is the Two of Pentacles. The Page of Cups, the Hierophant, the Three of Wands, and the Ace of Pentacles. Okay, so the Two of Pentacles is definitely keeping things in balance. This is all about balance. It's not just balance in the, the Pentacle energy, though. It's balance between, look. She has, like, to me, it kind of looks like the sun. It could be another planet. I don't know. It could even be the earth. But it also, she's got her purse in the other hand. The important thing here is to keep in balance the things that you're attached to, like the pinnacle energy, your money, your security, your health, your wisdom, 
your knowledge, yes, that is a commodity. You know, all of those things that you're attached to here in the physical, keep it in balance with what's going on with you spiritually. Make sure that you keep that in balance. Make sure that you stay in balance and in harmony with your spiritual self and that material thing that you that we all have going on because we all think about paying the bills like making sure the clothes are clean you know da 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 we all think about those things all the time but it's important to keep a balance and make sure you still have your that spiritual nature that you're tying it really strong as well um the page of cups energy is about alignment the page of cups energy is about lining yourself up with the law of attraction it's about bringing in, if you're looking for something that's up here, then don't put your vibrational energy down here. It won't line up. If you're looking for something up here, then you have to align yourself vibrationally with what is up here. That way it lines up. This, he's trying to figure out how to line himself up with spirit because so that he can bring in what he wants. Look at how to line yourself up with what you truly want. Your, that vibrational energy. Line yourself up with it. The first way to do it is to be grateful. Gratitude. The first way to do it is to be grateful. The other way is to connect yourself with spirit just like the Hierophant here. He's following his own rules, his own moral compass, his own belief system, his own sense of integrity. And it lines him up directly with spirit and he's happy about it. When he aligns himself up with spirit, everything he wants comes into his path. And he's successful with it because the three of wands is a successful card. It's a successful card. She's looking out over this ocean and she's thinking either, and this is again a part of a law of attraction. She's thinking, I can conquer that and has that, that success, yeah, that success mind, um, I'm going to say that wrong. That success, like, uh, it's already in her mind. Like, that mental success energy. Already lining herself up with it. She's looking out there and saying, I can do that. I can. Or, she's already done it and she's standing there looking at it and going, I have mastered that. It's the same vibration. It's the same vibration. So when we ask for something to come into our lives, Virgo, when you're in a manifesting space of like bringing something into your life, you have to go ahead and say, I have it. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it to me. I have done it. I can do it. I do have it. Those kind of are the kind of things that we see with that law of attraction energy. And the Ace of Pentacles shows us that we may not see, like, not everybody may see the results. Look, there's just these two little, like, little things right up here, right? The two little peaks of sprouts. What's so important is all of this growth underneath. It's important that you see how anchored you are with your root system. It's important that the roots are there. The basis is there. That's what's so important here. Not what everybody else can see. Not everybody is going to see how successful you are with your manifestations until it's time for the fruit to come. But you see it and you feel it because you have certainly put in that time and that energy to establish your roots before you grow up. You're establishing the root systems first. That's definitely something to be grateful for. And that's definitely something that you're using that courage, that perseverance to like get through this, like that time of your life. And I kind of feel like you have gone through it, but you're, it's not ended yet. It's not ended yet. Like we're still, we're still going through this, Virgo. We're still going through it together. So we're not at the finish line yet, but we're still working through this. And this is a great time to really, really align ourselves with 
the vibration that spirit has for us. Like if this is something we want, we need to align ourselves with the vibration of that, that thing, that person, place or thing. I know whether it's a job, a relationship, a, like a business you want to build, um, like a home you want to purchase, a car you want to buy, whatever it is, you have to align yourself with the vibration of that person, place or thing. You can do it, Virgo. I know we can do this. <laughs> I know. Like, I'm encouraging you, but I'm encouraging myself too. My, oh my gosh. This is, this is perfect. This is lining up with like, it's, it's lining up with stuff I've been telling myself. That, and I've been watching a lot of reruns of The Love Boat. Yeah. A lot of reruns. Of I don't know why. It's just, it's, it's available, it's free, and I'm nostalgic. What can I say? Love to see Meryl Steubing in his little outfit. <laughs> Cassia. Nice. Me and my cousins used to fight over um, who was going to get to be Julie, you know, the cruise director. Uh, but, you know, sometimes I had to be gopher when we played the love boat. I didn't feel good when I was gopher. He's cute and all, but let's face it. He was gopher. Ooh, Mercury. Oh my gosh, your ruler. <laughs> Our ruler. purple here and even there's like purple tones I don't know if you can see it clearly but there's a lot of purple in this card too very interesting okay there's smudges all over these glasses so yeah all right first um, advice card comes from the uh, animal deck mouse attention to details Mouse scurries around looking in all the corners, sometimes overlooking the simple message. It reminds you how to it reminds you to look carefully to see the forest and the trees. Be observant by paying attention to details without compromising the big picture. Focus on the obvious to attain your dreams. Okay. Uh, the next advice card comes from Spirit. It is Mercury, open communication. Get a weight off your chest. Speak up with love and be heard. That's nice. That's nice. Okay, and the last advice card comes from the essential oil deck, Cassia. The emotional aspects of Cassia, it releases worthlessness, humiliation, insecurity, and betrayal. It instills courage, worthiness and value it creates value worth and confidence in oneself helps us to see our own potential and innate gifts the centering thought 
I create my own experiences and empower myself in living my truth with confidence and great love. Oh, self-love. The affirmation. Why is it so easy to feel confident and full of love? And the chakras is the sacral and the solar plexus. My absolute favorite, the solar plexus. This is so great for you, Virgo. This is really, this is really great for us. I think this is a wonderful time. I really, really do. Because again, we have our ruler in Gemini. And what an awesome place for him to be for a few weeks. And I think that this is just a wonderful time for us. So get out there and manifest. Get out there and be grateful for what you're, what you're trying to bring into your life. And more importantly, align yourself with the vibration of what it is that you're trying to bring in. If you're trying to grow a business, if you're trying to grow a relationship, if you're trying to grow a community, whatever it is that you're trying to build, Virgo, make sure that you are in alignment with that energy with that vibration it's gonna do us well it really is thank you so much for joining me today thank you so much for supporting me on my channel make sure you watch your monthly numerology um of course it's on this channel as well <laughs> uh, and don't forget to drop me a comment below and let me know if you like this new format of mine where i'm doing this uh like at the full moon and the new moon um just let me know I, w I really want to know what everybody thinks. I mean, I may not change it back, but um, I think I'm really liking the way that this is turning out. So I'm going to give it another few weeks and then I'm going to make sure. <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful full moon in Sagittarius. And until we see each other again, get out there and make your magic. Bye. Bye.